is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Friday the 3rd of June. Uh, this is the Tiger Technicians Hour. My service here is the Technicians Hour at 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, 877-927-6648. Let me get some overseas callers as well. But what I also do is my newsletter, the opening call. Uh, what we're looking at at this particular point is that the Dow's down 172 at 33,075. After that spectacular move yesterday down to the 14 period moving average, first time it's tested it since it broke above it uh, back in the um, third week of May, um, this is so far pretty good action. As I said, I think it was, in fact, a week ago I was saying 345. Yes, so last week we had a very strong candle. And what I'd said is it's really important for this candle to see a higher high so that the stochastic can get into the 80% uh, or higher area and the MACD would move higher. This is technical Friday, so a lot of people ask me questions about, um, could I just briefly go over the the buy signal and, ha no, could I get briefly go over the, the reason why we went long? We had, we had been going long, but the reason why we made a big effort on the Monday after that Friday uh, turnaround, and that was on the 20th of May. Uh, on the Monday, we went long. And what were the reasons for it? And the reasons, a number of reasons. One is, just on a purely technical basis, whenever I get a DOG, the one-to-one -one short, in a leg D to the upside, that's when I start to look at, are we now about to get a buy signal or at least a turnaround in the DIA, the diamonds one-to-one -one long? Uh, and what would that what what would constitute a really good signal? So we don't know about what's going to constitute a good signal until it happens because sometimes you get price but you don't get the technical. Sometimes you get the technicals without the price. You really want ideally both things to happen. So look at the way this peak D. And now I can actually put a down arrow because I've put an up arrow in the diamonds, which we've been long since the uh, morning of the twenty third Monday. Uh, Monday a week ago, yep. Monday, yeah, Monday a week ago. And what we're looking at here is uh, at 36.65, the DOG. Look at the way the MACD. I drew this in. And I said, look at the vertical test. Uh, the technicals were really strong on the 12th. Yeah, the 12th of May. And although it went to a leg D on the 20th, the technicals weren't anywhere close to as good. The, the MACD was much lower, the on-balance volume was about the same. The uh, MACD was good, but it had already started to show uh, signs of wear because the histogram was already starting to pull back. So that was a clue. Uh, in the Dow itself, INDU, there we go, in the Dow itself, the turnaround, remember we had, this was the fifth what I call Chapman Wave Roman candle. I've now talked about variations of that, that Roman candle. And this was a, a kind of a, re a variation. And the other ones had seen two to three sharp moves up before failing, sometimes as many as five or six, seven bars up before failing. Uh, but in this, but they did move up immediately. And what I said is, if we can get that move up and then sustain the move because the MACD starts to expand, the histogram uh, turns positive, the stochastic goes from under 20% quickly to about the 58 to 62% area, and the on-balance volume gives a really strong move, that means that we've got a move this time in the Dow that could be sustained. Well, we've had a move that's been sustained, and not only that, in one, two, three, four, five sessions, we took out, uh, we took out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, almost 11 sessions on the left side. So if you're looking at what happened on the right to the move up, the, um, the uh, remember, on the, we talked about semicircle, and I talk about the, um, the, the ellipse, the, the little quarter part of the semicircle, 
and that's called the, the Quaro. And that is right here. The speed with which we moved up was really important. And that makes any pullback here using time. We've kind of used time, and that might impact much. We have squash formation. That's where the stochastic goes from under 20% to over 80% 80, 80 really quickly with the MACD, the aperture widening between the nine period differential and the red 26 period exponential moving average, um, as well as on balance volume and price moving up sharply to get the nine above the 14 period. All of that's happened. So we are right now at a very critical moment because the talk, the move of the Chapman Wave squash formation with the stochastic, and reason why I put the stochastic under the MACD, that power that initial takeoff needs to see a really quick leg A. It doesn't tell you how high. I'm saying usually it's high because that's the only way the squash pattern is going to work. But it tells you that you need to get to a leg B within two or three bars and then to get a leg C within another bar or two. And that's a that's a called Chapman Wave squash formation. We're only in the process of trying to form it right now. So we might find that, yes, you have everything else, but you don't get the squash. You've got a spectacular move from 36,635 to 33,272 in the space of a week and a half. Um, great action, but now comes the big test. All right, so that, that answers that question. Next question was, in the weekly chart, what would constitute, oh, first of all, uh, the follow-up was, have I got a buy signal? Yes, at the close yesterday, I got a buy signal. What would constitute a buy mode would be a close above 33,270. It doesn't really have to close, but because it's taken a little bit of time, you got this. Let me put this in here. M most of you who know Chapman Wave Method Rally will recognize immediately when I do this that there's a chance for a stalk leg formation or even a one to one to the upside, or it becomes an arch failure. So this little circle right here, so far, Everything about it is correct for the, putting the circle in. And that is, in the Chapman Wave methodology, there's a technique I call the stalk leg formation. And that says there's a really strong move to the upside. And eventually, it just suddenly stalls and it forms an oval. It must be an oval pattern. It's more a circle pattern, it says. I got a call. Um, more, more than that, it says that you probably begin to get a one-to-one um, -one to the upside. Let's go to Earl in Seminole. Earl, how are you? Good, Basil. How are you? I'm very well, and what are we going to look at today? How, I'd like to take a look at the Bitcoin ETF, B-I-T-O. Oh, B-I-T-O. Is that, is that the Bitcoin futures, or is that something B-I-T-O? I don't know if I've ever even looked at B-I-T-O is it. the ETF. Oh, so that's different. That's the ProShares Bitcoin. That's different. Too. Yes. So does this trade 24 hours a day? Uh, because, because the GBTC, which is the Bitcoin fund, which we finally, after two years, I think it is, we got out of, um, uh, I, it has the same kind of pattern. But anyway, you know what? I'm going to look at BTO, BITO. This is the Bitcoin process. Uh, Bitcoin, what is it? Process. I'll be back with uh, Earl in Seminole, down, down 167, down 44. And we'll have it discussed as soon as we return. It's got a rectangle formation. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back. Dow's only down 123 now. s and down 38. Uh, so for the buying pressure seems to be there. It's that piece of sales. I've got on the call and Seminole. Well, you want to look at BITO. Do you mind if I do, uh, um, I've already got all the notation down in the GBTC, which is the Bitcoin Investment Trust, which looks exactly the same. Would you mind? No, not at all. Okay. Now, I, 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 sh I would do a little research to see which is better, the BITO or the GBTC. Now, I, I heard Tom uh, O'Brien talk about the uh, a, a, a Bitcoin Investment Trust as a, a, being at a 28%, a minus 28% a discount um, uh, to the to the actual futures. I, I must say, I remember that he had discussed, and I can't for the life of me remember which he would... Was it, the, was it a genie? Was it a gold? I don't remember. Tom had discussed that in great detail years ago with some other ETF or a fund uh, being at a discount. And before you knew it, uh, the, the whole thing had really collapsed. Um, and that might have been specific to a particular one. And that might not be specific to BITO. Um, and it might just be specific to Bitcoin. So I'm just saying that's just a warning now. Uh, for subscribers and opening call, we were long from the from the um, 12 area in a short and long term position. Ran it all the way to the 58 area. We made huge gains, and then we kept just a little bit. I only wanted to keep a little bit to get a sense of what's going on. And uh, this week we got out of everything. If I'm looking at it again, I'm going to come back fresh, and I'm not sure what instrument I would get in. I have to do a little research on that. But what I do like about the difference between the Bitcoin Investment Trust. And the BITO that you were talking about is that I've, I have a longer history with it. I have a monthly chart, and it shows the huge give back from the 58.22 area that was made in 2021. And here it is down in the 1918 area. So what I want you to say is, no, number one is, it's in a rectangle formation in the weekly chart. This rectangle formation cannot, under any circumstances, close under the doji candle low of the 12th of may which was 17.48 so just to give you a context the beat bito that particular low was oh it's just almost the same it was at 17.23 so if it closes a point underneath that and i'm going to emphasize closes under a point below the low 
there's a really good chance that this entire rectangle formation can become a huge barrier. That's number one. Number two is in the sideways action, now I'm going to go for those of you looking on Tiger TV or in the den, you see that there's been a repeated peak A, peak B, and then a C, and then it pulls back. Sometimes you get a Chapman wave restart, and as long as you do not take out the left side low, in this case, I'll just use the GBTC for the moment because that's what we're looking at with all the notations, and that would be at 17.48. A close below, no, a push below 17.48 will be negative. A close below 17.48 says you've got to restart any wave count to the upside. So the Chapman wave restart works really well if you go for a long period of time in a very narrow range in a rectangle making a lowercase h that can go to a lowercase m, but you don't take out the left side low. If at any point there's a significant close above the high, and that would be the high of the 31st of May, which is at uh, 21.10 for BITO, that would be the high of four days ago, which is 20. Uh, let's see, 20.17. So a close, I see a, a significant close. It has to be about a point higher. A point higher says certainly for BITO that is starting to fill the gap, that huge gap, and it's been under the gap. You know, I got a rule of thumb for the gaps. This just, this has been very negative because the, the gap low of the 6th of May in BITO was 21.93, and the high the very next day was and 20.79. So if that gap ever gets filled, all of a sudden, now I have to go to the Bitcoin futures itself because that trades uh, almost all day and night, except for little periods off, and certainly on the weekend takes a little bit of a break for a day or so. So what we're looking at is it, this did go above the left side high, and now it's gone right back in. I just think that Bitcoin is stuck for, the, for a moment. It's kind of, it's in a trading band. So I've given you the analysis on what to look for negative, what to look for positive. Now I'm going to ask you the question, what are you doing? I'm short the BITO, and I was just wondering if I should hold it for a while or sell it now. Okay, so yes, the, the answer to that question is dependent on a number of factors. But the most, okay. the simplest is if you were short from the last two days, you're seeing a really nice gain. Now, I don't know, do you ever hold these overnight, over the weekend or uh, uh, over over the night or uh, especially oh, the weekend? Yes, I've held it. I've been short since 20, since $20. Okay. So then this makes it a lot easier. I'm going to suggest two things. One is immediately take something off because we are talking about a really volatile instrument in a trading band, in the middle of the trading band, it's actually a little bit towards the lower end. Once it goes to the lower end, there's a really good chance it wants to test the low of the rectangle, the base. So I'm going to recommend just money management says, because you're going into a weekend, it's better to have something off and think about it. But here's the other thing. if you Are, ab are you able to put a stop on it? Yes. So then what I would do is the 14-period the moving average on BITO is at 1888. I would say at 1896, over the weekend, if you can have a stop of 1896, take off something right now, 1896 will be the stop. Um, that would be, the, that would be. but since you are looking at, your, your feeling is that it's going a bit lower? Yes. Okay. So if that's the case, you see, this is another thing that I like to look at, and this is what I often do. In fact, I should have discussed it immediately. When the MACD and the stochastic rally sharply, but the price cannot hold the gain, be careful because what will happen is that as the technicals start to deteriorate, <coughs> the price will move down even sharper. So that's the kind of scenario you'd be looking for right now. So I'm not going to change the, what I am going to add is add a third position, and that is take a little bit off now. Have a stop, what did I say, 1892 or something, just above the 1888 14-period moving average that was resistance yesterday. And then I'd have a third, a third step to the whole thing that says, if at the end of the day, there's a rally from 1832 where it is right now, but it only manages to get to 1862, 
then I'm not sure whether you would want to add back that little bit that you took off and have a tighter stop on it. But um, that that wouldn't be very good if it's only able to, at this point, to rally about 25 cents or so. If it, if it actually closes at the low, then there's a really good chance that on Sunday night it'll, it'll, it'll drop even further. So I, I mean, I'm with you. I think it's looking very poor. But I'm also saying money management says you've got to have some stop in place. I hope that helps you. Thank you, Basil. You're the best. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going to take that to the bank. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, have a wonderful weekend, Earl. Uh, yes, folks, we'll be back be in the at at 197. Thank you. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with the free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. And I'm just looking at this. Let's just get the exact price. We're looking at the low of uh, four, uh 1572. Okay, we're going to go to our next caller. We've got Greg in Austin. Hi, Greg. How are you? I'm well, Basil. Thank you. How are you? I'm well, thank you. And you'd like to look at? Uh, Cassava Science, uh, S-A-V-A. Okay, Cassava Sciences, Biotech, uh, involved in Alzheimer's and many other aspects. We had a high of 146.16. Uh, July of 2021, had a little bit of a pullback, I would say maybe 90%, down to 15.72. Um, Mid-May, mid had a spiral double, more than a double up to the 36 area, pulls back again to the uh, 
that's the green nine period exponential moving average 2713 having a fabulous session today up eight percent at 2.29 29.85 so we have someone in the den we have dan in the den who as this has been one of his babies for a long time <clears throat> And he discussed it, and he was discussing this when it screamed up to 146. Um, this is something that's been on my list <laughs> only because it showed up in a screen. And uh, But what a while. This is like a bucking bronco, right. that's for sure. So right. what, are you, what are you doing? What's your, what's your situation? Uh, well, I was actually lucky enough to get into it the other day. went up to 37, and um, <laughs> I... Um, I got. I have to tell this, but I walked away for, you know, like about half an hour, and uh -oh. I come back and it had ran up to the thirty-seven, and then it ran back down to thirty-three, 27. and I missed a whole bunch of points in that. So I got into it again this morning because it looked like it was going to go again, yes, uh, which it has. So I'm in at twenty-eight and change, and but. Uh, what I'm uncertain of is whether it's going to be able to, uh, which way it might break from her from here. And so, um, after missing as many points as I missed out on the other day, I don't want to do that again. But uh, so I wanted to get your take. So, uh, so Greg, the, the, the real issue is that you were actually in it and you had huge gains and you gave up gains because you were just stepped away and it just whoosh, you came tumbling down. Is oh, that yeah. it? Yeah. I saw that okay. 37 and I went, oh my gosh, round number. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is what I'm going to make. I, I don't have to tell you, but I'm just going to remind you because we all tend to forget certain things. There's so much in the market. It hit a 37 round number high. Maybe you didn't even see that. What I'm going to say to you is, when you see um, so anything that you have start to make a move that is beyond your expectation, then my suggestion always is just like I did with uh, just a moment ago with uh, uh, when we were looking at the short side, and um, this is this is always very interesting to me. So when Earl from Seminole was looking at his BITO, the Bitcoin, and he was short. And I'm, I would say to him, in terms of just the money management, take a little bit off, especially when you're on the short side and you're right. In this market, it's always best to take your profits. But in this particular instance, that was a, not just a good move. That was a spectacular move. Oh, so yeah, I know absolutely. that. So for the, for the really big hitters in the market, I'm talking about historically like, uh, um, you, you know, you, you can name them. Just the, like the really the people who made oodles and oodles of money some of them would double then triple and quadruple up on positions that they really liked for most of us lay people um you've got to have um, uh, just oodles of capital just sitting there saying you know what if i make a mistake ah just shrug your shoulders and say it's upsetting but you know what uh, it, it's not a bad thing but in our case just uh, you regular human beings what you want to do immediately is say is, when I woke up this morning, I did not expect to be making 8 or 15 or 20 percent. I have to take something off. And I, I learned that from Tom O'Brien. Tom O'Brien is doing a, a webinar a week from today, and he has some wonderful, absolutely wonderful tools of the trade that he uses all the time. But one of the things is, um, if don't, basically, don't look a gift horse in the mouth because I, I think that that's just a wonderful – and what he used to say, he hasn't said it for a little while, but he used to say, um, just take the money and take your, take your wife to the – what was this? The, not the Four Seasons, but whatever the fancy place is down in Clearwater um, or, or get yourself a sweater or something like that. I, I think that's just a wonderful I, – I, that, that is a gift. You're talking about a gift horse, that is a gift expression because – it says to you, I've got something basically for nothing. I didn't do it. I didn't even earn it because it was a surprise. Therefore, I have to reward myself. So this is just a lesson. It's not just for you. It's for me. It's for all of us. That's number one. Number two is this morning you got in around about 28, and this is a 29.40, yeah, 20, mm -hmm, 29.30. And it's gone off the high, which was 30.74. In this particular instance, what I would say to you is, 
because you've got an immediate profit, and I think you're treating this more as a shorter term, you'd love for it to be a longer term, going back to the 146, but it's a biotech, and you have to treat it kind of as a short-term proposition. So I'm going to say to you, even with this up a dollar, dollar and a half, why not take just a little bit off right now, and that can allow you to say, you know what, I'm going to make my stop either my entry point, or you can use the profit that you've just made to give you a little extra cushion. That's number, that's, that's number one what we're talking about today. Number two is, okay. you, if you look at the weekly chart, I don't know if you can see this, if you're looking at the Tiger YouTube or if you're in no, the right game, but if you can see this, look at this pattern. Um, you see the black line, that's the 14-period exponential moving average. Even when it ran to 146, it closed below the 14-period moving average. It has a habit of just periodically going for one, maybe two bars above the 14-period moving average. Look at the rhythm. Look at the bars. Look at the number of, of weeks or months between each U-shaped lower high and lower low that it keeps making. Now it's just done the same thing. So I'm going to say to you, if you're just looking at the pattern, the pattern right. says that the pop-up this week to the 37 area might be the high for a little bit. It'll be a change of pattern if by next week it extends this particular candle with already a doji, a reversal, a doji with a long wick underneath it, sitting right on the 14-period moving average. So I'm going to say to you, because of the daily, the structure of the daily, which is in leg B, actually peak B, the MACD is good. I don't like the fact that the stochastic was over 80% for about uh, seven or eight bars, and then boom, it comes down to the 59. That's just not good. So I, I'd be a little careful, and I'd treat this only as a trade. If you survive the trade, let's just say you were in a 28.10. If you can survive 28.35 by the end of the day, and mm -hmm. over the weekend and on Monday we come in and this thing pops again, that's great. But the pattern says that it's having a, a real tough time. And this is a Chapman Wave inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle, the high of at 37 on the 20, whatever right. it was, 28th. So if it, at any point in the next week, regardless of whether you're in or out, if you see this trading for 90 minutes above uh, 33.55, for 90 okay. minutes, there's a really good chance it's going to break 37 round number high. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much for calling, and, you, uh, and let's see how it works out. Thank we'll be you, back, sir. folks. The Dow's down 291, S&P's down 62, struggling today, keeping back some of those big gains from yesterday. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. 
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. The stock that often showed up uh, in my screen, uh, uh, and this is the screen mirror with an M, uh, list. Uh, WTI, and we, we had it just briefly once, and we don't have it. And look at this, just in two and a half weeks, it's gone from under five to today's high of $7.84, leg D in the daily. This is called WTI, it's WNT Offshore Inc. This is a leg F, and this is recycled, maybe F slash C in the weekly chart. It looks to me like it wants to go back to the nine, uh, almost about $9.70 high back in 2018 in a big cup formation. This is acting so well. Um, I, I, it, it's so hard. I'd seen it about four days ago, five days ago, actually, right here as a leg C. And um, look at this. It hasn't stopped once. It has made higher highs every single day from – every single day from – the 20th of May, where it was trading at a high of 574, every single session since then has been a higher high, going to the high of the 1st of June at 746. Has just a fraction, 746 was the high. The next day, 745, one penny lower. That makes a peak. That's the Chapman Wave methodology. And then it goes to a leg D. Unbelievable. A leg D. And it's a D in the daily, D in the, in the weekly, and an F slash C in the monthly chart. This is fantastic. I, uh, you know, I have a rule of thumb that I've, my, my, I lost my thumb. I didn't use the rule of thumb. And what I, the rule of thumb is when something shows such power with the MACD powerfully high, the stochastic way above 80% and 91%, on balance volume starting to rally. But look at the gray relative strength. You've got to close your eyes. Even today, I, I suppose you could do it. I don't know, leg D, yeah, I wouldn't do it. But any day, you could have just grabbed it and said, I'm putting in a stop um, underneath whatever it is. I'm getting it, even if it's a gap up. And until it makes a D and pulls back like it did from the previous D, this is just, this can, can go higher. That's the only way you can treat these things. You close your eyes and you just hold your nose. You put in your stop and you buy it. Now, of course, I, sh I should do that right now with a flat stochastic at 91, but I won't. So uh, it showed up as a screamer. I wanted to discuss it because some of these stocks, it is so hard to just close your eyes and say, that's my methodology. I've got to stop in. If I'm stopped out, fine. But if it keeps going, it's incredible. Look at the percentage. Just from the 647 level, I was looking at it the other day to uh, – 784, I mean, on a percentage basis. All right, so that's enough with that. I wanted to show that the other thing is a uh, question. I had a question. Yes, so the question, um, TY, I, I said I would look at it a little later in the week, uh, uh, today, was TY, TYL, which is uh, Tyler Technologies. And a question yesterday was, uh, it, it was at about three, wasn't it? It was at 350. I think it was 355 or 357, and I said, start a position here, and if it takes out the high that was made on the first, which is at 364.40, I would treat that as a trading position, 
and I would this one here I would have a, a reasonable stop on it um, but then I would keep that as a call the one that you started yesterday and in this case you haven't added to it it's trading at 356 it's down four and a half uh, 356 it's actually holding quite nicely but it needs a lot more to garner the kind of strength remember I was looking at it as, as the base of support um, so I'm going to stay with exactly what I was saying. You should still be in. The stop should not be hit. But if it closes underneath the pink nine period moving average today of 352, if I'm just going to make it right now. If it goes to 352.50, I'd be out. All right. Uh, but the same rule of thumb, even going into t Monday, Tuesday, if it goes, this is your core position. If it goes above one penny above 364.40, I would add another position and treat that as a trading position, even though it's going into a leg D in the tiniest little buy mode from a peak AB and peak C. Uh, that's the only way I would trade it because it really doesn't look good on any other time frame except that if at any point in June, it must be in June, if it starts to trade at 378, 382, that would help the weekly chart immensely and say the 391, 40 period moving average would become uh, a target. But absolutely, if it goes under 340 at any point in the next three days, that's not good. Next question I have, oh, question, uh, CHWY, oh, that was Chewy. Let's just see where it is today after the great move yesterday. Yep, it's in a leg B, uh, trading at 28.77, down 41 cents, but it did make a new recovery high. This is the, the rectangle for me. Remember, if Earl's watching, you see this pattern here where you go for the, the H pattern, then you make another smaller H pattern. Don't take out the left side low, and then it pushes and closes above. That's usually a positive sign. But that rectangle pattern is so, the magne magnet of the midpoint at about 26 is so strong that by Tuesday of next week, maybe Wednesday, this has to be closing above 30.63. Otherwise, it's stuck. Next question I had was, uh, Baba, Baba. Alibaba, yes, they all had fantastic moves of the bottom, but that rectangle formation at a low is like a magnet. It contains the price in, a, in, in the sideways movement between the trading bands of the rectangle, and that's kind of where it's stuck. Uh, HPQ, I said, wow, I had not looked at that in ages. It was a spectacular move. Um, it's trading down six cents at 39.83. Together with IBM, it looks to me like there's. IBM, I said to buy under 37, and then yesterday I took it off the list because I had other buys. Uh, yeah, we got one that that did did okay, but um, no, that was actually the one. It's in leg B right now. IBM is breaking to the upside. It's in leg B in the daily chart, uh, B and C in the weekly. It's still stuck in a rectangle range, but this is telling us that the oldies like Hewlett Packard and IBM could become the newbies in this particular phase. And I'm looking at this and I'm kicking myself and saying, well, it's not a big deal because if it's going to go to 151, there's still plenty of room to the upside. But it is upsetting because I had it planned and then I took it off for the one day, which we would have got it under 137. It went fractionally under it and now traded to the high today of 142.58. I, I, I do like it. Question about CCI. CCI, I said yesterday I would look at it with a Chapman Wave potential, Chapman Wave Roman candle. It's an inside bar. I still have, I'm having trouble, uh, Coda, with this pattern that was just way too deep. I don't care what the reason was yesterday. It's down to at 185. To add to it, um, I'm just going to say I like the fact that it's in the REITs, in the towers. Towers, I mean, look, it's up near the highs. It is a potential oval pattern. I'm going to draw that in and we'll see over a period of time. I tell you what, I think you had asked if you could add to it. And what I'm going to say is because you like to look at, you've got the big picture. Um, and because it's a big picture, here we go. I'm going to make the suggestion. Hmm, isn't that, hmm, that is interesting, isn't it? Perfect oval pattern. Here we go. Look at that. Oh, it's actually a circle rather than an oval. Yes. So I'm going to make the suggestion CCI, Crown Castle Corporation, trading down to at 185.02. Yes, I'm going to say I would add a split small position. And the first split position right now at 184, I just, I, I'd start that right here at 184. Now it's going to 185. <laughs> 
I, I'd start it here, but don't expect too much from it. But what I would say, the reason why I want you to be in it, because if it closes any day next week above 180, 187.30, that's why I would add that second question. And this one has a stop below today's low of 180. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So uh, just quickly with the CCI, I wanted to say, I, I said that the stuff should be uh, under today's low of 184.32. Oh, 184. I'm going to make it a little low. Make it 183.95. Just on that, that's for the questioner. Um, okay, now next question was, I, I, yesterday was a question about, got to look at silver stocks. I didn't I get to it. Uh, pass um, is stopped at the 50-period moving average at a peak E. And this is so unusual to have such a, a, a an extended buy mode with the technicals very strong, but the price, I mean, on a percentage basis, yeah, it's great. Going from uh, 21 to the uh, 20, 24 area, three point, I mean, that's a big move. But really, on a pattern, this is all that work to get to a peak E. I think they just stuck for the moment. As soon as pass can go above 26, that's just a completely different kettle of fish. If you're looking at SLV, that's the silver ETF. Look at this, it's just stuck in the low range. If you're looking at the GDX, stuck in the lower range, had a peak D under the 200 period moving average. They just need more time, I think that's the way it is. Uh, so that's that question there. Another oh, other thing I want to mention was thank you, GT, for your comments about uh, uh, Benioff. Yeah, well, Benioff and Musk are two separate entities. Benioff, I think, is an individual that I, I, I obviously done a fantastic job with uh, Salesforce.com, but I also think that he had lost some of his focus. 
Um, and that's one of the reasons why the stock came down with books and things that he was writing. But Musk is something different. And I suspect that Musk with Twitter and now starting to a bad mouth employees. I don't think that's a good idea. I know it sounds great and tough and all that. But and I, I maybe I even agree with him. Maybe not. That's not the point. The point is this is not the way. And not only that, when he's moved from being more, it seemed it appeared that he was more a Democrat, and now it seems like he's moving towards a Republican. You don't want to alienate your buyers. There are a lot of people that are going to stop buying Tesla because of that reason. So I don't know what game he's playing. I just don't think it's a good idea. And I think Tesla is under tremendous pressure. And until it's a break, it's a problem. I just think it's under pressure. Anyway, I'll cut that out. <laughs> Have a fun weekend. Check out both people. Uh, be very selective. Um, and we'll see what happens. Have a great week.